Okay guys, we have our um, some of our bigger pieces of wood that I split uh, down towards the bottom to create a foundation. So the smaller fire we start on top of that is going to assist in lighting these more wet pieces by dropping the, um, the coals down into this. So then we'll develop ourselves a nice uh, cooking bed for a little cooking we're going to do today and I'll show you that. So how we're going to start is I am going to use, in my opinion, I mean I have fat wood, I have some other things, but what I didn't, haven't really talked about, and this is a very simple fire starter, it's cheap, and in my opinion is number one, and that's cotton ball and Vaseline. I mean I rarely use uh, man-made tinder, but there's a few things going on right now where I don't have quite the abilities and angles that I would like. So we're just going to use a simple cotton ball and Vaseline. Um, number one, if you ask me, number one for man-made fire starters. You could also use dryer lint. Dryer lint works well. But these are just outstanding. Uh, they're simple to make and very, very cheap. And I just, I, um, I scoop out some Vaseline into this bag and then I put a bunch of cotton balls in it and move it around and let the Vaseline soak and then just seal it up and I have fire starters right here. So we're going to use that for our fire today. And let me bring you in a little bit closer and I'll show you the best technique that I've found to work with these. Okay, another technique that I use with cotton ball and Vaseline, guys, that works really well, is I'll take a piece of tin foil and wrap one of them or two of them in tin foil. The tin foil works really well because it almost works as, um, makes it a candle effect. The petroleum and jelly will soak down into the uh, tin foil and hold it there. So maybe we'll show you that here in a little bit. But the easiest way that I've found to use these is when I used to take one out, I would set it down, I would kind of pull little hairs out or use my knife and poke little hairs out and try to get it. And it's, it's such a simple trick here, but it's something that I learned from Viet Normbo. And all you simply do, make sure you can see the fire base here, okay? Is when you take one of these out, you want those hairs because you want that to catch. All you're simply gonna do, and sometimes when they're soaked, it's a little bit tougher, so you gotta kinda work it. All you wanna do is pull them in half. See that? You have those hairs created. Then you wanna take these, and they have the petroleum jelly on the bottom. Hope you can see that okay, and stick them right on to where you want to work with the fire. So see, we already have the little hairs. Can you see that okay? We have the little hairs and the Vaseline on the bottom has enabled them to stick to our wood. We're going to strike that and then we're going to throw on our pencil lead sized and get our fire going here. grab our good old coal steel shovel and once you have these little hairs it's not going to take very much at all. There we go. I've tried many of the um, man-made fire starters and I have found for the price, because a lot of those can be expensive, not saying that they don't work, they can just get expensive, um, you have to order them and wait for them and these you can make right at home. You can pick up a huge bag of cotton balls for a dollar. You can grab a huge jar of petroleum jelly for about a dollar and then make them and you have your own cheap and easy homemade fire starters. So 
So it looks like our wood's drying out a little bit here. Kind of damp out here today. And all we need to do is just let it work. We have the advantage of the very slight breeze going through this side. And we want to pretty much throw as much as we can on there because we want it to dry out while it's on there. And what I did when I um, started preparing is I just found everything that was off the ground, dead standing that was off the ground. So as soon as this wood dries out, the smoke is gonna go down for us here, guys. And I try to crisscross as much as I can when I add other tinder to it, other um, fuel to it. So let me swing you around here and I'll give you a, give you a good shot of what we're cooking here today. You guys might have remembered guys, the last time we talked about the MSR Seagull, I talked about being, the versatility of this and being able to actually cook on the lid. Well, today, that is what I'm gonna do. I have an egg right here. I have my pot there, and the way that we're gonna do that is our fish mouth spreaders. We just open them up, and see that lid right there? We're gonna put the fish mouth spreaders right in that lid, and that's gonna be our fry pan. So I'm going to move you around a little bit here guys and let's let's show you. Okay to extend the handle a little bit all I did was carve out uh, the end of a stick. I thinned out the end of a stick and slipped it right into the fish mouth spreader there. Throw a little cooking oil on it first.
Make sure you can see that okay here, guys. And eggs are a very easy thing to cook over the open fire. Very easy to keep an eye on, very quick to make. And for a fried egg, guys, we're just about done here. There's our fried egg, guys. Not too bad. Easy breakfast to make in the woods. But this is one of the reasons I love the MSR seagull so much using the lid as a frying pan. We could have threw another egg in there too. Would have cooked it just fine. A little bit of cooking oil heated up to help it. And there we go. And there's our Dakota fire pit still burning. And as you guys saw, it took no time to cook at all. You could even cook meat in here. The only thing I've cooked on here is ham. Um, slices of like lunch meat ham. I've thrown on this before and cooked those up. But you can do bacon, sausage, any kind of meat. Just be mindful. Excuse me guys, it cooks really quick. And just to show you guys all I did to make this uh, little handle here. Because this fish mouth spreader over the fire gets very hot. So I just took our spider grow bushcraft. i take this out. And I grabbed a stick that was semi-green. You know, not completely dead. You don't want it too soft and I just shave down both edges. And you don't want to go too thin because then you're going to lose some of the ability as a handle, but you want it thin enough to where you could maneuver maneuver it in. Then I just shove it in until it's sturdy. You know, once you shove it in, just move it around a little bit till it's sturdy. And there you go, there's your pan handle. And you don't have to worry too much about flipping it around because this is pretty much the position you're gonna want. And I even keep some wood stacks, so I kinda set it right on the wood sometimes and lift it and work in there when needed. 
Okay guys, I just wanted to give you one more quick look of our Dakota fire pit here. It's still doing a really good job of taking advantage of that airflow that's coming in from this side. The reason that this works so well is a wet, dead, and marginal fuel is all going to burn fine in here because you have that airflow from underneath. It's going to create that nice coal on the bottom and that airflow that goes through, through the bottom, up through the fire, is what's going to give you that nice healthy fire every time. So this is a great fire. Um, it's kind of under the radar. It's a little bit lower and clean up is a cinch. All you need to do is all this dirt that I dug up, I'm just going to dig back into the fire in combination with some water to put it out. So that'll be no problem at all. But this isn't the best wood that I have in there. A lot of it was on the ground and wet and I just threw it in. And it's burning really well because of the airflow and the coals that have developed on the bottom. So just a very, very good way to, to make a fire, um, to cook over a fire. You saw that I cooked the egg a little while ago and that was perfect over this type of fire. And the hero of the video is our cold steel shovel. This was highly recommended to me by my friend Joey at Wilderness Kydex and it's a tremendous piece of gear. Um, you saw it baton, you saw it chop a little bit, um, chop some of the smaller sticks in half. The edges are relatively sharp. I put an edge on this side, somewhat of an edge. It's not a shaving sharp edge or anything, but it went through wood really, really well. And you also saw I struck, um, we made some feather sticks and then I used it on a ferro rod and this thing was great. Um, it packs away really well, much better than my um, little Black & Decker garden shovel that I was using. I love it. I love this piece of gear. Um, so I wanted to show you guys the ability of digging um, with the sharp edges because it's also somewhat sharp up around here. Uh, the digging was great. Um, no roots got in the way and when they did I was able just to chop them away. The sheath here doesn't come with it. You have to buy the sheath separately. But you're going to want the sheath. I mean, just to have this swinging around like this isn't a good thing. So you'll want to include the sheath when you buy it. It just goes on as so. And we're going to use this more, guys. So I'm going to show you some other different ways to use this when we can. So that's the sheath. It has a little hook up here. And that's how I could carabiner it to my pack. But I have that pass-through system on the um, Teton Explorer 4000, so it just packs right along the side. And I know you've probably seen a lot of videos on it, but I just want to reiterate how great of a piece of gear this is. I highly recommend it. The, the um, cold steel shovel. And there is our Dakota fire pit, still burning strong. And I'm glad that you guys can join me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, very, very nice to be here at Sanye Forest in the fall time. I mean, this place in the summertime, late spring and through the summer, is very harsh with the bugs. And that's why I have that deet that I showed you before, that 99% deet that's very, very strong, let's just say. To not have to use that is great. There are no bugs here. The uh, colors are changing, so it's beautiful, and I love it, and I've had a great time, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video as well, and we will talk to you again down the road, guys. Thanks. Bye-bye.